so qualifying is now done and dusted. We are very shortly to move with our first race of the day, which is the SBS Brakes Cup 1000. Uh, they are lined up in a uh, magnificent sight on the grid. It will have number four, Peter Eccles, on pole position. His time was a 58.753. Alongside him on the front row, number 117, which is Paul Barker. And then 35, Brad Mercer back for another year on the outside of row one. We are almost good to go. The revs rise. The green flag has been uh, taken from the front of the grid. And the first race of the year for No Limits. And the SBS Brakes Cup 1000 gets underway now. And it's a fairly good start from the front row of the grid from uh, Peter Eccles. But will he hold the lead down towards the first corner? I don't think he will because of the uh, outside of row one, which uh, luckily for uh, Brad Mercer becomes the inside for Cops Corner. I think he's just managed to get his way through as they stream in their entirety down towards the left and right flick of Maggots and Beckett's for the first time. Down towards the left-hander at Brooklands now, and it's two for the lead. Someone a little bit wide there in third, fourth place by the looks of it, but they're going to get back into line through the right-hander of uh, Luffield. Up towards Woodcut then to complete the lap, and the timing screen should give us an indication of who is leading the way. And it looks like it's the number uh, four machine of Peter Eccles. in second, so is that Brad Master Mercer that now leads on bike number 35 across the line, we wait for them all to update, uh, across the line it was Barker ahead of Eccles, uh, but I think Mercer's transponder has got an issue, because it drops down and yet to be on the screen, now it is, uh, so it's number 70 in fact who went through in the lead, Doug Johnson, so he made three places on that previous lap, so brilliant stuff there uh, from Doug Johnson, so he is now pushing on to see what he can do quickest lap of the race does stand currently with the race leader Doug Johnson on a 58.984 uh, last time round he led by one and a quarter second so this is outstanding stuff for Doug Johnson uh, across the line goes the leaders on to lap number seven of the race working our way down towards uh, Magus and Beckett once more and it's now Brad Mercer back ahead so Scott Halliday has had a poor lap there he's dropped a second and with that now puts him in third place so that's not good news for Scott Halliday Michael Needham Still sits there in the middle in second position and Brad Mercer back to the head of the order as we said on bike number 35 so he now charges his way down the back straight and I don't think that's quite going to catch the traffic because the last lap flag is about to be prepared for the top three they work away from Luffield now and I think this might just be enough of a buffer for Brad Mercer to hold on for a second victory of the weekend so through he comes on to the last lap goes Brad Mercer Needham and Halliday are separated by uh, three tenths of a second as they go down towards Cops Corner fourth place is that of Paul Barker fifth place Dan Diamond Doug Johnson has now gone to sixth place so that's one ticked off he's got one more lap to squeeze himself inside the top five Brad Mercer up towards the line he's about to come he's going to be a second race winner of the season in the SBS Breaks Cup 1000. Brad Mercer takes the victory. Second place goes away of Michael Needham. He could have been the winner there. So too could have Scott Halliday, but they have to settle for second and third. Uh, Paul Barker comes through in fourth on bike 117. And then fifth place for number 441 is Dan Diamond. Just holds off uh, Doug Johnson to the tune of three tenths of a second. And then behind that in seventh place is number 50, Romaine Thomas. Eighth place for number 79 is Tony Wells. And ninth place for number one, then see Cole Nicholson come through from 13th to 9th on the grid and 10th place for number 9. We'll very swiftly move on with our next race, which uh, in due course will be for the No Limits Cup 600 and the Pirelli Super Series at 600. Hello, my name is James Allison. I race in the Pirelli Super Series 600 Championship and No Limits Racing. Well, it started off very well. We had a good few rounds with No Limits, won a few races, was fighting for the championship. Went to the first round of British Championship, 
Had a good first round at Alton Park, put it on pole. Had a good few races there. Went to the Donington Park round. Uh, the World Super Sport, and I managed to get my first ever win at British national level. So that was a really strong moment in, in my career. And then on the Sunday, on race two, it just all went downhill and ended up having a real nasty crash and damage injured my shoulder, my right shoulder real bad. And pretty much that's, that's where I left off last year. Unfortunately, man, I had to lose out the championship. We were fighting really strong. It was, it was really tight on the points. There was only a few points to me and the other lads. So it was a real shame to end up finishing the season off with an injury to not be able to fight for that championship would have been trying for for the last few years. It's hard one to say really because he's a good rider, I give it credit to him. Uh, it was a shame that we didn't get to fight for that championship in the end but we still had a good few races with each other, one of us beat each other and each of us had our good races and our bad races so in that sort of sense it was good really uh, but that doesn't mean that there's going to be no competition in this class because there's a lot of good lads here this weekend so I'm going to have to, I'm going to have my work cut out for sure. There is some good competition in this class and we're all so close and there's a lot of talent as well so it, it's, it is going to be hard. It, it, yeah it does mean I've got one less person for competition but it definitely means it's not going to be easy, it's, it's definitely still going to be hard work. First time back out properly since a shoulder injury so basically just came here with an open mind thing and as long as we know that my shoulders are alright we'll, we'll have a good weekend and today it's been better than what I could have ever thought it was going to be. I've nearly got 100% movement back in it and it's felt strong and I've been fast so I, yeah couldn't ask for any more. Three wins, that's what we're going for, three wins. We'll try as hard as we can but that's, that's the aim, three wins, three out of three wins. Good to see once again this category uh, growing and in fact all categories for this weekend look like they are fully sold out and the grid after qualifying this morning uh, will line up as follows it will see number 134 which is Aaron Sylvester start from pole position he comes from the Crelly Super Series 600 class alongside him number 11 which is Sam Andrew Laffins and 45 Tom Fisher on the outside of row one row two then sees number 77 which is Finley Arscott uh, 19 James Alderson and number 10 Andy Smart last few bikes coming into place that being Sam Andrew Laffins on the front row of the grid so he's right there into the middle I think we've got the majority of the field as we should have so at the back of the grid we'll see a green flag which comes from uh, Nathan Mullinger this weekend down there on the grid so he uh, waves the green flag that gives note to the front that we are good to go so we are very shortly to have red lights on and we're going to be set for another 14 lap race this time of course only get three races across the weekend so 14 laps for this class as they blast away from the grid and it looks like the pole sitter has got the best of the starts in towards the first corner so Aaron Sylvester will lead them through we hold our breath with 40 bikes trying to get their way through Cobb's corner which they do manage to achieve so that's good stuff as they now power their way down towards Maggots and Beckett's for the first time and we'll work out who's who of course we have got Cam to give us the best insight what colour bike what looks like. Ruddy Super Series 600s as they power their way now towards the line, very close between the top two. I think that is Aaron Sylvester just ahead of the number 11 bikes here, Sam Andrew Lappin. this time for Aaron in, no it's in fact Sam who's gone through isn't it, yeah so Sam has gone through into the lead of the race so Andrew Lappins comes through, across the line, now he's the new leader ahead of Aaron Sylvester. change again for second because that Alderson is back ahead of Sylvester so at the end of the lap where James Alderson is quicker and it's the beginning of the lap where Aaron Sylvester is quicker so they're kind of trading places on different parts of the track here now as I look 
down towards Cops Corner. There are yellow flags, so there could be trouble, unfortunately, for Sam Andrew Lappins, which means our double winner so far this weekend is out of the race, as Aaron Sylvester has also lost the lead now because through ahead of him has gone the number uh, 19 machine, James Alderson. So he now leads across the line by just under two tenths of a second as they stream across the line as quick as anything once again down towards Maggots and Beckett's. But James Alderson is being hounded here by number 134, which is Aaron Sylvester. So they're going to go nose to tail towards Maggots and Beckett. One into the pit lane, uh, which is going to be, I fear, a retirement because that's not going to have any chance to carry on in this race. In the meantime, the battle for the lead continues, still with number 19 ahead of 134, but they get uh, still very close to each other as they cross the line. After losing third place, Finley Arscott now wants to try and get himself back into a better position on the podium. Uh, we are onto the last lap, by the way, so watch out for James Alderson and Aaron Sylvester. They're just about to work their way in towards the left-hander at Brooklands. They are off the Wellington Strait very shortly. We keep an eye on what's happening uh, with them. They're not quite going to catch the traffic, I think, but it's very, very close for first and second. Uh, James Alderson still just about holds it as they turn their way now in towards Luffield for the final time. I'll keep an eye on what happens for third place as well, because that's uh, very close for comfort as they accelerate to the line with a back marker in the way. Can they get through before they see the checker flag? The blue flags are waving, and it's going to be a win for the first time this weekend for James Alderson, who just gets the job done. Second place behind the back Mark, it goes Aaron Sylvester, but uh, all in all, fantastic racing between those two, separated by half a second at the line. But a first win for James Alderson here at Silverstone. Third place goes away on number 45, which is Tom Fisher. And for Tom, that is his uh, second podium of the weekend after the one he got yesterday. Finley Arscott just misses out on a podium on bike number 77. Fifth place goes away of number 70, which is Lee Wells. And then for sixth place, it's going to be number 10, which is Andy Smart. Seventh place for number 556, uh, five, which is the machine of Tommy Fielding. And then behind him, number four. So what we can do is we can get you ready for the next of our races, as we said, where we step back to the 1000s. So again, let's give you the relevant page in programs. And if you flick back through your programs, if you have one, if you haven't, then do grab yourselves one. As I said, they're full of all the information you need uh, for this weekend, including timetables, entry lists, uh, championship positions from last year, and all the other details about No Limits Racing as well. So grab yourselves one of those. But for now, you need to be on page 12, because that's where you'll find the entry list with the majority of the uh, field taken over by the Metzler Newcomer 1000s. But for now, let's take you through then how the grid lines up for our Metzler Newcomer 1000 and the Ducati Coventry JHP Challenge. Qualifying this morning saw times just for one rider dip into the uh, sub 60 second barrier, but everyone else was over the 60 second mark. And that van belonged to number 41, Paul Gallington, who did a 59.987. It was roughly just under three tenths of a second quicker than number 24, Adrian Cameron, who starts in the middle of row one. And row two is number, sorry, the outside of row one is 255, Reese Young, not forgetting him. He starts there in third place. Row two, then see number 185, which is Simon Workman. Uh, fifth place, number 66, is Daniel Johnson. And number 83, Simon Adams completes row two. Row three, we'll then see number eight, which is Sean McTuggett. 51, Stephen Ward. And 85, Paul Michelle. We're just waiting for uh, Christine Woods, who is holding her flag aloft in the windy conditions here at Silverstone. We now get the green flag from the back of the grid, so uh, Christine once again can head off from the front. All the riders now look towards the uh, Nighting Gantry, which again will illuminate red. We'll look there as well. We'll see the lights come on, and when they go out, we'll be racing, which we are now. So away they go. A cracking start there from the pole sitter, which is Paul Gallanton. He got the lights to perfection. Unfortunately, Adrian Cameron uh, was a little bit uh, caught on the back foot there, so he's, I think, dropped down to about fourth place as they work their way down towards the left hand of Maggots and each one for the first time. hard there by the number 24 machine which comes through now into third place so a uh, place gain there for Adrian Cameron so his qualifying speed this morning is now starting to show within this race which is good so he's now back into the podium places uh, we've had the number 255 machine of Reese Young which dropped down so here's the one 
who lost out. And on that lap as well, the number 66 machine, Daniel Johnson. runner Connor Thompson now down to fifth place so that uh, blistering speed he showed in race number three at the weekend has not really transferred into this race as of yet and while he finds himself falling back and the man out front and the leader of that class Paul Gallington has just gone and done the quickest lap of the race is Adrian Cameron so he was out there he wasn't on our grid sheet but Adrian Cameron He's making a, a, a comeback, just like we saw in a previous race from another competitor. And Henry Cameron is now starting to work his way back through the field. It was Doug Johnson, wasn't it, the earlier race who came from the back up into the top six. <laughs> lap number nine has now been ticked off, and we're on to the last lap of the race. The second between the top two. Uh, there's two tenths of a second between the leaders in the new colour class. So uh, with the Brees Young now under attack from uh, Sean McTaggart, Reese is looking for his third win of the weekend, Sean looking for his first, this would be an outstanding result for Sean if he can get the job done, so keep an eye on those two bikes as they head their way on towards the Wellington Strait for the last time, because he worked his way towards the chequered flag for a third win of the weekend uh, for Paul Gallington, uh, second place and the win in the newcomers for the first time in 2022 goes the way of Sean McTaggart, a great drive there to get himself half a second up the road from Reese Young who's looking for a third win in the end, he'll have to settle for two wins, which I still think will play very highly in the championship as they head to Snetterton in three weeks' time. But a uh, great ride there for Sean McTaggart to take a victory. Second in the newcomers, but third overall is Rhys Young. Uh, fourth place number 30. Uh, one more race to come before the lunch break. That will be handed over to the Metzler newcomer. At 600, so that'll be with the pre-injections of the Moto 46 Street Bike Cup, which effectively is for the uh, Triumph 765 machines, but also I can see in there as well one of the Kawasaki 900s I think is just slotted into the uh, entry list as well. But for this one, again, we're going to be near enough 40 uh, riders out there on circuit, so the grid lines up after qualifying this morning with number 39, Paul Holden, on the pole position. Alongside him will be the number 28 machine of Chris Fothergill, and 160 is Robert Goodwin, who rounds out the front row of the grid. Row 2 then sees number 20, uh, 74, sorry, Tristan Rice, with number 88, Luke Stanley, and 24, Jamie Wilson. The third row is number 95, Martin Ford, with 929, Aaron Dakin, and 85, David Sutcliffe. The fourth row is 410, which is Michael Stansfield, 61, Mark Crossley, and 12, Jonathan Hedges. On to row number five, that's where we see the likes of number six, which is Sean Evans, 42, Michael uh, Neelands, and 47, Joe Farragher. First time since 2014 we're here on the national circuit. We are good to go then, 10 laps for this category of classes. Red lights go out now and away we go from the front of the grid. Good start from uh, Paul Holden, who was uh, uh, dominant performance last year in terms of the races he won. But what can we do on this occasion as he turns his way towards Cox Corner? I think he's just been outdone there by Chris Fodergill, the number 28 machine. So he is down already to second by the looks of it.
So we're about to complete lap number five. Paul Holden, no surprise, quickest man on circuit, 59.195. And he's about two and a half seconds per lap quicker than anybody else in his race so far. So as I said, he's, he's in the Moto46 class. He knows he'll be in the class of his own at the minute. And like come second place, and it's still going to be Chris Bobby. Let's have a look as he crosses the start finish line. He goes through, and yes, it is. So Chris Bobby Gill. Uh, now there's two bikes between him and his nearest competitor within the newcomer class and Robert Goodwin is down into fifth position. Uh, two of the Moto46 riders now in between them. That includes number 88, which includes Stanley, and also number 74 making progress that time through, which was Tristan Rice. So they move up the order. And to be fair, they are slightly quicker than the newcomers in terms of that speed. So you'd expect the uh, Moto46 machines to be ahead of the 600s. Paul Holden now goes through onto what's going to be yeah the last lap of the race for him as that uh, flag is shown. Uh, all the bikes now pretty much seem to be on the last part of the circuit. So through Luffield up towards Woodcourt, in there somewhere is second place, which hopefully is still just for the gill, or is it? Let's have a look. Yeah, through they come. Uh, the gap now is just second between those three bikes, and they are in amongst the traffic well and truly now. One of them has to sit up as they turn through Cops Corner. It's the bravest of the Braves through the next lap now because place on the circuit and I hope that it is the right place to be with that bike as they turn their way through Maggots and Beckett's off the Wellington straight for the final time will come now Paul Holden. He works his way through the left-hander of Brooklands in towards the right flick of Luffield and up towards Woodford Corner. Very shortly will come the first time winner this year Paul Holden. Bike number 39 is about to see the checker flag. It's held a lot now and Paul Holden will take that ahead of, is it going to be a newcomer rider? There goes second place and I think it will still just about be Chris Bobbergill on bike number 28. Yes it is, ahead of number 74 which is Tristan Rice and Joe Farragher, credit where credit's due, came from 15th to 4th and in the end was only 9 tenths of a second back uh, from the leader of the newcomer class. There you go, three passes with each of the top three, but as I said, top 15 in the class that will score championship points. And for now, that brings us to a close of the morning slash early afternoon action. My name is Damien Fricker, um, I'm the No Limits Cup 1000 champion from 2021 and I'm racing in the No Limits Pirelli Super Series this year in the Premier class. So I, I rode here back in 2007 I think it was, so it's the first time here on this new layout, uh, testing's gone pretty well, um, we found a couple of little things with a bike which, which has helped us throughout the day. We started off super quick in the morning and then everyone else got faster than me which is a bit frustrating but um, the last session was the best session of the day. Um, for the weekend, really, I just just want to go out and ride the bike. You know, I won the title last year, um, but this year is about seeing where my limit is, seeing if that was my pace or if we can be faster. Um, and being in the Super Series, even though we're in the Premier Championship, like being around the Super Series boys, it, it's going to drag me on, hopefully. So I, I'm quite keen to see how competitive we can be, you know, with, with, these, with these fast guys. You know, I want to be, I want to go to each circuit that I went to last year and be faster. Um, I don't want to put too much pressure on myself, you know, I want to be competitive and I, and I just want to ride my bike and be quick. You know, if I can go and get some trophies along the way and, and, and mix it at the front, I'm going to be super happy. Um, expectations, I'd like to be top 10 in the Super Series, um, but yeah, who knows. You know, I, we'll, we'll wait and see. Okay. Hi, I'm Joe Tolbert. I'm riding Cheshire Moldings Kawasaki, powered by JR Performance. Riding a Pirelli Super Series 1000 and BSB Stock 1000 this year for 2022 season. Last year was a really good year for me, coming in second in the British Super Stock 600 and winning um, winning the Pirelli Super Series 600 Championship again for the second time. Really enjoyed last year, learned a lot, especially running at the front end, and it's definitely brought my riding on a hell of a lot. First ever day here on the foul, and I got 
took me about half a day, but then after that I started getting into good times and getting a flow with a bike and just like loving it really. Not too many expectations for myself this year because I know how tough the stock 1000 class is, especially in Britain. Um, I'd like to, to score points and maybe a top 10 at that, there or if, if everything goes well I think I can get inside the top 10 maybe and in the No Limits Super Series 1000 I'd like to be running out the front every weekend. Uh, last year we finished uh, fourth in the Pirelli Super Series Championship. So we started off the weekend, uh, first of all we are still waiting for bits arriving on Thursday evening for the bike after what happened uh, in Cartagena testing. So we went out on Friday just kind of getting a feel for the bike, uh, making sure everything were working before we got up to pace. Uh, we're really happy with pace, obviously we're not where we want to be but uh, we're going to build our way up this weekend. So going into qualifying on Saturday morning, uh, we qualified 21st on row 7, um, which to be honest, uh, we're more than happy uh, with that considering uh, we built our way up. Then going into the race, we had a bit of a, a bog down on the start, obviously it's his first race start with the fly-by-wire throttle. Dropped a few places but uh, finally got myself into a rhythm with a bike and uh, we managed to gain uh, quite a few places, setting a new PB, a second faster. Uh, now we're down to a 58.105, which uh, last time we were here was a 59.3, so that's good. We kind of had an open mind coming here this weekend, but we're, we're really looking forward to uh, race two this morning. We're going to go out and free practice in around 10, 15 minutes time. Just get us head into it and uh, see what we can do for uh, race two. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Silverstone for action from No Limits Racing for 2022. It's the opening round of the season, and we're very shortly to get back underway with racing with the afternoon session for the Pro Super Series 1000s, which, as we said, is supported by the Premier 1000s once again for this year. And we're about to get underway with this 14-lap race as the red lights come on, the reds rise, and away they go. And a pretty even start for both Dave Allenham and Braden Elliott on the front row of the grid as they work their way down towards the uh, first corner and let's see who's going to come out in the, the head of it all very close between both number 11 and number 51 but they stream their way through very nicely at cops head down towards the left and right flick of maggots and beckett and with that all 40 riders pretty much get their way nicely through without too much drama break out front for the leader and then everyone else trying to buy to be second place got side by side action through luffield corner and they'll accelerate full power as best they can through Woodcut and on towards the start finish line to complete lap number one. And it's going to be the lead for the all black bike by the looks of it. So is that Brady and Elliot? Now Brady and Elliot who's dragged himself to the head of the order. And wait for the timing screen to update. But what a sound these bikes make as they head across the line. All of them have made it through by the looks of it. A few stragglers towards the back, but they're in the race, which is the main thing. And it's going to be number 11, David Allen, in fact, who does lead the way. So across the line already down towards sector one ahead of number 181 Sean Winfield in second at third place good start there from number 30 Craig Neve and then behind to round out your top five number 99 is Ben Luxton Braden Elliott in number 51 he's out front leading the way down towards Cobb's corner gap now is 1.9 seconds pretty much about two seconds between the top two and it is Braden who's done the quickest lap of the race with a 55.479 so uh, blistering speed already from the race leader. New second place there for Sean Winfield. He's jumped up ahead of both uh, Neve, who he was anyway. So Craig Neve down to third, or up to third, I should say. Fourth place for number 99, Ben Luxton, is up a place as well. And it's uh, the number 11 machine, the pole sitter, uh, Dave Allen, who's now down to fifth position. So not having uh, the rubber of the green at the minute as it stands. Down in fifth position. Top two, nothing to choose still between Brayton Elliott and uh, Billy McConnell. They come through uh, across the line. They tick the transponder line, and the gap between them is now less than a tenth of a second as Billy McConnell sends one to the inside of Cops Corner and goes through. So Billy McConnell takes the lead away then as they head their way onto this seventh lap of the race. So he didn't want uh, one away any longer. So straight through goes Billy McConnell. Uh, Braden Elliott tries to think about an outside move in towards. Uh, Maggots and Beckett's but uh, then doesn't do anything about that so he sits in the toe as they head onto the Wellington Strait and uh, just all of this happening just wondering if Dave Allenham can make any inroads into the top two he can't at the minute that gap has continued to extend now to uh, the best part of one and a half seconds so Dave Allenham just struggling to keep with the 
uh, top two, and that proved to be the case last time round with almost a half a second slower than uh, Billy McConnell, which is uh, quite a margin when you think of how quick these laps are here at uh, Silverstone. Braden Elliott has gone back into the lead of the race, and while I've been watching uh, the incident down at Luffield, uh, Braden Elliott has gone through. Billy McConnell is then second. The gap was only eight hundredths of a second. So Dave Allenham hasn't dropped too far back, actually. He's only 2.1 seconds adrift now, so he is falling further adrift, but not to the extent that you would have imagined. On to the last lap of the race then in the Pretty Series of 5000s. Fair way off the checker flag as it stands, not yet onto that last lap. They're just coming now down in up towards the line to start their last lap. They're going to be more than 30 seconds adrift. So as they go onto their last lap, uh, about to come through the last couple of corners in the traffic is going to be Billy McConnell to pick up his first victory of the 2022 season in the Pirelli Super Series 1000. He works his way then up towards Woodford Corner. He's in there somewhere amongst the traffic and the checker flag will in fact come out now with a wheelie uh, to Billy McConnell. He takes the honours there ahead of Braden Elliott by two seconds in the end. Third place goes the way of number 11, which is Dave Allen, uh, just on the podium in third position just off it unfortunately this time is Sean Winfield on the 181 machine fifth place for number 30 is Craig Knee at uh, sixth place number 15 in fact that changes at the end there because fifth place goes to Nathan Harrison on that last lap Joe Talbot also improves the position up to uh, sixth place on bike number 19 Craig Knee takes seventh and number 21 takes eighth place which is Ryan Kringle and then behind them ninth place number nine is Callum Kukor and tenth place So we're almost ready to start the final race of the day here at Silverstone on the national circuit. The Super Twin Standard Twin CP500 with the modern and retro 400s. Red lights on and away we go for the final sprint race of the day. And it's going to be Matt Late who makes the best of the starts from pole position. So as expected, the Super Twins runner uh, on his Kawasaki makes the plunge down towards Cops Corner for the first time. He'll lead Adrian Teasdale and Dean Armstrong through the corner. But how close can they keep to him? We'll have to wait and see. There's a couple of fallers. In fact, three fallers have gone at Cops Corner. Every single one of them, by the looks of it, have stood up and walked away, which is always good. It's hard on the brakes, turning right through the corner and then heading onto the Wellington Strait for the first time of asking in what have been glorious conditions, not just today, but all weekend long here at Silverstone. And can Matt Late wrap off? A glorious weekend with another win. Well, he hasn't quite done the clean sweep, has he? But he's looking for at least a hat trick of wins as he comes through. So on that way they go down towards Cops Corner. Tommy Downs has made his way through into third place on bike number 17. And with Jim Weatherald on bike 240 in fourth place, and Russell Brook, the man who dropped from second place down to fifth. started to stretch that margin over Tommy Downs. Let's see what we can do about Dean Armstrong. Uh, these top four bikes all in the Supers. Standard's still being led by number 18, which is Martin Crammond. He's just managed to uh, pass his way through on the number 90 machine of Jack Cook. And we have a red flag, unfortunately. So something has happened, I think, again down at Maggots and Beckett. So that's been the place where most things have occurred so far today. So Maggots and Beckett's where we can see double wave yellows and it's out of the camera shot unfortunately so I can't see who or how many are involved there goes the camera for a quick pan I can see a bike there but whether the rider is down I'm not too sure but the red flags have been called so that brings the race to an early end but what do we do with the bikes do we keep them or do we send them back we're at five laps completed so we have done half race distance we'll very shortly to head on to lap number six Clear up done then for the uh, red flag, which means bikes have made their way to the grid ready to start this restarted race. The Super Twin Standard Twin CB500 with the modern and retro 400. It's going to be a five lap restart, so another 
short and sharp restart for the riders. Gives us about a five minute race in this one. Back to as they were on the grid. So Matt Late on pole, Dean Armstrong alongside and Tommy Downs on the outside. So we all look towards the lighting gantry once more. Good race here as they get underway. Nice push away from Matt Late. So he gets the 100 machine into the uh, lead trying to get back towards the order once more. Bit of a dive down the inside in towards Beckett's there. That's where we saw the uh, drama. We brought out the red flag. But uh, we've got another one down as well there by the looks of it. So someone has run wide. The bike has gone off. The rider is absolutely fine. Gets onto his feet. So it's keeping the marshals very busy down there at uh, Beckett's. So the battle is recommenced out front between third and fourth. You've got up there as well number 240, which is uh, Jim Federal. He sits inside the top five, just ahead of the 400 leader. He's going to look for a top six finish here. Tommy Downs now three and a half seconds drift in fourth. Under pressure though from Jim Weatherall. So this is a Super Twins battle and for an overall position as well. So keep an eye on both of them as they turn their way through down towards the Maggots and Beckett's uh, complex for the final time. And Matt Late is already through there. It's checker flag at the ready and the old black bike comes through. And Matt Late is the winner of this Super Twin, Standard Twin, CP500s and Modern and Retro 400s. Uh, great way to start the No Limits racing here at Silverstone. As we said with perfect weather we could not have got any better really for this time of the year so uh, we've, we've enjoyed that very well uh, thank you so much to the marshals for all their hard work this weekend at silverstone we need to pay um, a bit of respect to them because they always do a tremendous job out on post and they do it for free volunteering work so we very much appreciate all your hard work our marshals out there on post of course all our officials down in the pit lane in assembly and of course in uh, race control who have made sure that we've got this weekend to a close without too many dramas which is good to see we've had a couple of red flags but uh, nothing really to write home about which is good and we've got the uh, weekend done in good time as well because we were still five minutes away from starting the last race so well done to Claire Neat and as always the team up there in race control for getting us there without too many dramas and uh, thanks to all our fans and spectators for coming along hopefully you've enjoyed uh, the action and all the racing and we'll do it all again of course because we're back at uh, Snetterton on the 9th and 10th of April uh, for another enjoyable weekend weekend to look forward to so thank you everyone for being with us here for the opening rounds of no limits racing for 2022 uh, do have a safe journey home enjoy the rest of your weekend what's left of it uh, for myself matt sutton silverstone and no limits we thank you for your attendance and uh, as i said have a lovely rest of the weekend and we'll see you at snetterton